Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Alex. Today we're continuing developer benchmarks and tests on the new MacBook Pros. And we've already done a few JavaScript tests over the last few videos without breaking a sweat. So today it's time to cook some eggs. Now in this video, I'm gonna be running an Xcode project and doing a build that takes a few minutes to build. And today I'm comparing two MacBook Pros, both 2021. Now this one has an M1 Pro chip in it and this one has an M1 Max chip in it. So we wanna see the difference between these two and how they operate and how long it takes to build the projects. Now I've already built these and I've run these and these turn out to be much faster than the Intel machines. Of course, you already knew that probably if you watched my previous videos on Xcode builds, but it's also faster than the M1. So I wanna see M1 Pro versus M1 Max. And if you do wanna see the M1 comparisons, let me know in the comments down below and I can do that too. Now I haven't run these two machines against each other yet. So um, we're gonna do that right now and find out what happens. The test I'm running is located on GitHub and I'll link to it down below. This is created by Max Yeremienka and it's called Xcode Benchmark. Now I wanna tell you what's in it, but I'm gonna kick off the test first so I don't waste time. And uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about what this test does and the specifics. By the way, if you wanna see the results of different machines executing this test, you can go straight to the repository and check those out. They're all posted up there. I don't know how valid these results are. Hopefully people are being honest and submitting real results as pull requests to this repo. Now you could go ahead and download the zip file and do it that way, but because we're developers, we're gonna do a git clone, all right? So <laughs> I've already done that and I got it on my machine here we go. Now this repo has a nice little file called benchmark.sh. So without even opening Xcode, I can run an Xcode command line build right from here using that benchmark.sh file. Basically all this does is just execute Xcode build and points to the workspace. You could also open this up in Xcode, open up the workspace and build it that way if you wanted to. So I'm gonna follow the instructions. I did stop all the processes here and I rebooted my machine and I also have the machines both plugged in. Oh, and let's take a glance at the power profile because I know some people will ask about that. Even though these machines are plugged in, you can see that uh, right now in the energy mode section, I have it set to high power on the max. And here I don't have low power mode selected on the pro. So I'm gonna actually select automatic mode which will probably select high power mode once I start doing the build. One more thing for the exact specs of these machines, take a look at the description down below. Okay, let's kick things off. I'm gonna go execute shell benchmark on both of these. Now what's nice about this particular program, it also spits out the time at the end. And let's go. Couple other things I wanna take a look at here is the fans are both off on both machines. And this one is up to 80 degrees Celsius now. Now 82 and keeps increasing. While this one is, uh, it's almost there. It's now at 81. Oh, down to 77 over here. So the max is running a little bit cooler by 10 degrees than this one. Now a little bit about Xcode Benchmark while this thing is running. It contains a pretty large code base. However, it's a compilation of different CocoaPods, third-party CocoaPods all compiled together. So when you run this compilation, it goes through and builds all those. And to be more specific, it's a framework that includes 42 popular CocoaPods and libraries and 70 plus dependencies total. That's a pretty big project. But after this, I'm gonna build a huge project and that's WebKit. So stay tuned for that video that's coming up shortly as well. And this is done folks. That did not take long at all. We've got our results, 112 seconds on the Pro and 104 seconds on the Max. Now there is a little bit of variability between these executions and these builds because I did get 94 seconds before on the Max so of course, as any good scientist would do, we're gonna run this again and see what we get. Now, I didn't let this machine cool down between the runs. However, uh, in a regular development scenario, in a real world scenario, you do iterative builds anyway. So it's a more realistic approach, I'd say, than letting the machine completely cool down because that's mostly how we work. Now I am starting to notice that we are hitting about 90 degrees, which is turning the TG Pro software orange in color. Let's also check the surface temperature of this machine. So the max is at 37 and this one is at 36. They're pretty close in temperature, but that's barely anything. If I touch it, 
it feels warm, but it's not hot. The Intel machine used to get super hot to the touch where I couldn't even put my hand on it. I mean, I could, but it would not feel pleasant. Oh, folks, we've got the fans turned on now. 2400 RPM on the Pro, and we're at 1500 RPM on the Max. The fans kicked up, but uh, the temperature is still pretty high. Now, I bet some of you might also be interested in the CPU load. So I've got my activity monitor here. Let's check that out. Okay, didn't really have a chance to run the activity monitor. And as you can see, we've got 94 seconds on the max this time and 110 seconds on the Pro. And you kind of can tell from the CPU history here where things were being used. So we are using a bunch of these performance cores and you can see the spike at the end there on all of them, firing on all of them, including some of the efficiency cores or two of the efficiency cores, I should say, well. There are only two, so both efficiency cores had a little spike there towards the end. This is a nice build because it's utilizing all the processors. By the way, let me know in the comments if you want me to race one of these machines against the Intel or the M1, one or both of these machines, and we can do that as well. And if you want to see the really huge Xcode build, stay tuned for that video that's coming up shortly, as well as a video on iOS simulators and which one of these machines is going to be faster at iOS builds and starting up the simulator. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful or entertaining and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Turn that button gray. Thanks a lot, folks. I'll see you next time.